So I wanted to do a little voice over here for you guys. Well, we have a couple seconds to uh, give you guys some more info about what you're looking at here. Um, as you guys know, I got a new camera, so we're going to be seeing some more fishing videos out of me now. And uh, one of the places you're going to start seeing me fish quite a bit is this pond right here. This pond is located very near my house. Um, there's a lot of small ponds um, around my house, within five or six miles of my house. But uh, this one I fish probably the most just because it's the shortest distance away. Uh, it's approximately three football fields big and it's actually connected to another pond that's a, another street over. It has just a little like canal in between and then there's another pond. Uh, it's, it would be located behind me. But, uh, and that one's about two football fields big. So they're fairly large ponds. Has a maximum depth of eight to 10 feet. Not very deep, especially by our standards here in Northern California. Um, the lake that I fish, uh, Shasta, is 517 feet at its deepest so that's very very deep i'm sure a lot of people will, um that are watching this video from different parts of the country probably don't really even understand how deep that is because i mean it's it's really really deep and it, and it takes an entirely different technique to fish places like that um but this is probably something that you guys are more accustomed to um especially the people that are from uh like the south i'm sure that this is a uh, this is a little bit more what you're used to looking at as far as vegetation. There's a lot of vegetation in this pond. Right now it's releasing from the bottom. Um, so I'm trying to like with this lipless crankbait that I'm fishing with right here, I'm trying to keep it up. Like if I throw it out there in the middle and it's eight feet deep out there, I'm trying to keep it up because the vegetation reaches like two feet off, off of the bottom. But I want to get it down as deep as possible. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get it underneath the surface without getting caught up in these weeds because these weeds are very, very thick. So um, I just wanted to give you guys a rundown and I will do another voice over here in a minute. Not bad. What I was doing is I was um, taking that lipless crankbait. This guy right here. And you can see all the weeds that they're hiding in. And I was just yo-yoing it off the bottom. So just pulling it up, let it flutter down. Pull it up, let it flutter down. And he came and he snagged it. So good fish <laughs> alright guys so um, here uh, I'm, I'm gonna explain to you a little bit about the about this rod that I'm using I'm getting ready to experience a little bit of a torrential downpour and I do a pretty decent job of it explaining what I'm trying to explain here in the in the video itself so we'll go with that but as far as the rod is concerned I wanted to explain a little bit about it I'm, this is a, a Shimano Compre crankbait rod. It's seven foot six. It's a medium heavy, medium fast, or moderate fast action. Um, the seven foot six really helps me get this crankbait out there a long ways. I mean, on a good cast, 150, 160 feet, no problem. So I like that. I like that long cast ability with the seven foot six. Um, but 
as opposed to using like an eight foot rod, a seven foot six rod really allows me to rip the, the bait a, a heck of a lot easier than using like an eight foot rod. In fact, when I rip baits out of weeds, I'd rather use my seven foot crucial, same medium heavy, moderate fast action. I'd much rather use that rod because it's easier to get, uh, to rip it out of the weeds. But with that being said, this rod has a ton of backbone, but a very, very soft tip. And that soft tip really allows the fish to fight and you're, you're not going to rip the treble hooks out of the fish's mouth. I think we can pull out pull a fish out of here while it's raining like this. Normally when it starts to rain, it just seems to make the fish a little bit more active, especially right when it starts like this. I mean, you can normally catch a couple right when it starts. I don't know if it's because they, if it's because of a reality that the, that the plankton and the, are getting stirred up and so the bait fish are eating and so the bait fish are more active, so the game fish want to eat more because they want to catch the bait fish or if it's because the water, the rain hitting the water is more of a imitation of active uh, bait fish or active plankton or whatever else. There's one. There's one. That's a pretty decent one right there too. And he's pulling. On. You see the rod? The rod bent pretty decently. So it's got a lot of action on it. He's a good one. That's a good one right there, you guys. Look at that one. Woo! That's a fatty. Try not to hurt him bad. What we'll do is we'll, as we're pulling out the hook, just kind of push down on the, just like that. Look at that guy. That is a good fish, you guys. Nice and fat and healthy. See if we can see if he's eating anything. Look at that. Big ol' fat bass. Let's get him back in the water. If I can find a place to get in the water. And just like I said, you guys, I mean, it's more when when these. <coughs> there he goes. Oh, look at that. <laughs> when the uh, when it starts raining like this, it just seems to really stir things up. I can't explain it. As you saw, I was in the middle of trying to explain what my what my idea behind it was, but I, I really couldn't tell you uh, for sure. So, nice bass. Make sure you always check the line when you're done. See, I'll just go ahead and cut that and retie. 
there's no point in possibly missing another fish.